Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your, the second part of the uh, weekly update of Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 where as you can see things have not gone quite as well as we would like. Um, yes we had a bit of a, a crisis in the last episode and this was kind of caused by um, well because we were a bit thin on the ground so unfortunately Mark who's normally around on Norvis um, or is, is still on Norvis wasn't it wasn't here because he was away on holiday the, the, the quitter splitter <laughs> um, and unfortunately um, Mike and Tristan were both a little bit ill but they, they were actually around and playing but the problem was this is in fact this is Norvis and um, because yeah because Mark wasn't here wasn't on this planet uh, it was it was left essentially unguarded and this, in theory, shouldn't be a problem because we've got we've got all these defensive walls all the way around the edge that should be, you know, able to deal with any sort of any any sort of inquisitive biters that come over. Because we're not going to get major assaults because we've got all the pollution cleaning that's making sure that none of the pollution gets outside our walls. And so, in theory, we shouldn't get any significant attacks unless we're actually causing unless we're triggering them by going out and playing with artillery or something. Unfortunately, over here. We had an area. We had an area of wall that was um, was, was set up as, as you see, but and and a little sort of exploratory party of biters had wander out, wandered out. So sometimes they do this. You'll you'll have you'll have a nest like this, and the biters will sort of lurk around it, and they'll be they'll be they'll be sort of chilling like they are at the moment. And every so often, what some of them will get a little bit bored, and they'll go decide to go for a bit of a wander. Maybe go out and try and set up a new nest with a, with some new spawners and some more worms and that sort of thing. And so. That's that's generally fine, and that's why we have these um, these walls around the edge with, 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 to uh, to protect against any sort of expansion like that. The problem was this pylon was missing, and so this entire wall, all these lasers were unpowered, which meant that the biters, that that little exploratory party of biters, came down, wandered wandered over here. They got to probably about here, and went, "Ooh, lasers! We, we want we, we we don't like those. We're going to go and attack them." So they surged down here, started trying to attack these laser turrets, and the laser turrets couldn't fight back because no power. So eventually, the biters managed to chew a hole through the through the wall here. They poured through, destroyed the and started destroying these turrets. Oh, it's because there's a spitter on the other side of the river. And they're all out of power. And they're out of power. What? There's no power. And then for some reason they skipped over these turrets and destroyed these ones and skipped over these ones and destroyed these ones. I'm not quite sure what the logic in the biter brains was go was was along here, but in, in eventually they they done they done a bit of damage. We started to see the alerts popping up in the bottom corner of the screen here, and we had a little bit of a debate or an argument or something along those lines about um, what we were going to do about it. Given that I was off on Talos, Tristan was off on Njord, and Mike was off on Kothar. So while we were arguing about it, the uh, the biters made their way along the wall, carried on eat, eating stuff, eating stuff, got, uh, carried on merrily along here, and, um, and then eventually we decided uh, that that it would be the best thing to do would be for me to head back to Norvis because I was basically done on Talos at this point. And I thought, okay, I can I've, I've more or less finished off here. I can I can ju jump in the spaceship and head back over and drop down there and, and sort sort things out. Um, and then we thought, hang on a minute, but though by the time I've flown over there in the spaceship, the biters are going to have eaten all of this damage goodness knows what else it'd be a massive cleanup job probably need to get over there a bit more quickly than that now the correct answer to this is to do a an emergency burn in the in the in the pod so if i, if I jump back to uh, my, my my actual self for a moment i can put down uh do i have yes i do have a, i do have a space capsule so put one of these down with these you have various different options you can you can you can um, you can drop down onto a planet if you've got some fuel. You can do a, you can fly around in space, or you can do an emergency burn back to Norvis. And what this does is it will always allow you to get back to uh, back from anywhere in any, anywhere in the universe to Norvis. I, I believe anywhere in the universe, certainly anywhere in the solar system, back to Norvis. It wrecks the uh, the landing uh, pod, but that wouldn't really be the end of the world. So I could use the emergency burn to get back to Norvis with whatever whatever stuff I was carrying, whatever whatever I needed in order to get down there and, and fix it. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that this was a thing at the time and, until until a little bit too late. So I ended up using the uh, the suicide option where you can you can um, kill yourself and, and then respawn somewhere else so i put down a warehouse dumped my inventory into it so it'd be safe did that <clears throat> ended up back on back on norvis at that point i was able to hop in a train uh got in a train down down here somewhere one of one of the um one of the personal trains bimbled over this way uh jumped out of the train to go over and, and sort out the uh, the pylon problem up here um unfortunately i then re discovered that i didn't have my jetpack on when i tried to fly over the train that was then leaving and ended up, ended up getting run over by it instead so that didn't go too well 
So that was another death in, uh, in very, in very, very quick succession. I then was able to hop in another train because there were plenty of them down there, and Brooke rode that one up here. And then I was a bit more careful the second time I got out, put in the pylon, and then the laser turrets down here, presumably the ones way down the other end, all the way over here, then managed to kick in, took out the, took out the sort of. It was probably only about two biters that were making their way along here, destroying everything. But then the turrets were able to take them out, and the crisis was over. At least that was what I thought. Then I realised that the um, that the body I'd left behind on Talos still had the uh, lightning gun on it that we'd found in one of the uh, in one of the abandoned uh, space stations. And I really quite like the lightning gun. And we aren't able to make them at the moment. Uh, what's it called? Is it called lightning gun? Tesla gun. This one. Um, and we're not able to make the Tesla guns yet. We actually we are able to research them now, and they only, and they require holmium, but then, and ion stream. So they're not completely out of the uh, out of the out out of reach of us at the moment. But at the moment we don't we don't have the research done to to uh, to get the Tesla gun. It's probably going to require okay. It requires a load of energy science, and we don't have like, a huge amount of that available. So we thought better get really kind of need to go out and um and, and rescue that. So I've still got it. I can carry on using it later when next time I encounter biters. So, then jumped back in the train, headed back across the base, back down to the uh, the launch area over here, where I chucked in a few of the things that I was I was aware I was going to need back on Talos. Jumped in the rocket and flew and flew back out to Talos in order to rescue my body before the uh, the 15 minute despawn period had run up, and I made it, but with about three minutes to spare. So that was a little bit of a um, a little bit of a fiasco, should we say? And that all happened because Mark wasn't playing the air uh, on, on on Monday, and therefore uh, he wasn't he wasn't available on this planet to go and sort the problem out himself. So that was a bit crazy. So because Mark wasn't here, I had to I had to step in and, and, and take on his role. So that was fixing things on Norvis and getting run over by trains. So yes, that, that was unfortunate. With things now calmed down a bit, I got back in the uh, spaceship, flew back over to Norvis orbit, which is where I'm. Uh, where I'm currently si currently sitting. Here we go up here, um, with with the with, with with some cunning plans. So at the moment we we've got we've got a vague supply of beryllium that's probably not going to be enough, but will at least be enough to get us started. We've got a, a tiny supply of holmium that Tristan is working on improving. We have no iridium, but Mike is working on getting that up and running. So those are all sort of done. Iron and copper are the uh, probably the things that we have. We're getting through uh, other things we're getting through the most of, and, and steel as well, of course. Uh, but that's sort of iron, just more, more more processed. And so the problem with that, the reason we have shortages of those things, is because we don't have very much vulcanite. So over here, we've got the systems. Uh, now cook, we're now cooking the um, the iron with vulcanite, and we all with pyroflux, which is made from vulcanite. And we have, yeah, uh, some of it. We are we don't have an enormous amount of it. If we look over here, you see these tanks are all empty. The train is only half full. It is dribbling in very very slowly from Taishikuten. But as we've looked at before, the the amount we're able to make on Taishikuten from the core mining is a bit low. So I was thinking. We want to get we want to get another smeltery like this uh, using this sort of system, as in using the pyroflux smelting that's doing copper as well, because that's going to get us a lot more copper out of each piece of ore that we have to work with. And so that's going to be that's going to be a thing we want. But in order to get that running, we're going to need to have a lot more pyroflux available. So there are a couple of options. One is to go out to Taishikuten again and, and and expand things here. Now expansion can't involve putting down any core miners because that all the core all the core mining. That this is available is currently being used. Now we could, I could go out and start digging up some of these patches. There's there's 11 million there. There's 12 million there. 23 million there. There's huge amounts of vulcanite here. But then we wouldn't have all of the resources available for making the um, delivery cannon capsules. Now that's not the end of the world because we could use the um, we could use uh, Mark's upgraded delivery cannon production system, which allows you to use uh, which allows which pulls stuff in by. Uh, um, by delivery cannon in order to make more delivery cannon capsules so we could use that and make sure and that would ensure that everything stayed running fast enough and, and all, all up to speed um, alternatively my other thought was actually we could go out to Agnea which has a massive quantities of vulcanite on it so um, and it, it is a much bigger planet it's um, a 2000 radius as opposed to Taishikuten 600 radius so we'll get a lot more um, a lot more vulcanite being pumped out from this planet if we go out here and just set up core mining. And because it's bigger, there'll be spaces for more core drills as well. So I think we want to head out there and set that up. The problem is that it's waterless. So in the long run, I think what we'll want to do is set up a little space station in orbit around uh, Agnea with a um, with loads and loads of solar panels and a space elevator because you can pipe the power down the cables in the space elevator and power your base on the ground through that. So this will neatly get around the waterless problem. In the short term, though, 
Well, all of the good methods of producing power require water. So if you set up, um, if you set up our free power system, the um, the one you've you've seen many times over, this one down here, um, where we, we, you need a lot of water to grow the wood to make the uh, to make the to make the air uh, power. You need water for the coronal mass ejection protection as well. Ideally, you need water for all kinds of things. And whilst we can bring we can bring in water as ice, it's a bit of a faff, a bit of a pain, and we don't really want to if we can if we can avoid it. Um, nuclear power also requires water. Even burning coal requires water to produce the ste steam to, to generate the power. So what I think I'm probably going to do is come out here and put down enormous quantities of solar. Uh, the problem with this is that this planet has quite a long day-night cycle. It's 17 minutes. So that means there's going to be quite a long time in the middle uh, during the night when there just isn't going to be any power available. Which is a shame, but I think I'm kind of okay with that. And what, so what I'm going to, what I'm reckoning on doing is setting up uh, a massive solar system and a relatively small set of accumulators. So accumulators will run essential things like perhaps the um, the meteor defense guns because we don't want them to, uh, to, to, to to fall over during the night. Maybe some of the transmitters, probably not the transmitters though, because if you send a zero, then that's as good as as nothing. Um, and then during the day, we'll just we'll have the entire base run flat out during the day and then go to sleep at night. And that means we'll only get half the amount of Vulcanite through that we would expect to, because it'll only be working half the time. But at least that'll probably still be significantly more than we're able to get from this planet. So I'm going to head out there, set that up, and start, think start thinking about that. And on as, as a sort of a first step for that, I started loading up a rocket over here. And I've borrowed the Talos one because um, reasons, because there isn't one for Agnari at the moment, because we haven't expect we haven't planned for that yet, and I didn't bother building it up. And this one's got the big chest, a big warehouse next to it. That's handy. So I started filling this up with all of the things I think I might need. Um, got lots of solar panels, got pulverizers, core mining drills, loads of belts, loads of rail, uh, just generally all the stuff I think I should need for this for this um, for this mission. There's bound to be some stuff I've forgotten, uh, so it'll probably be a case of I'll have another rocket coming out relatively soon after with all the rest of it. But at least this will provide me with a good start. It'll get things up and running, hopefully, and we'll be able to start pulling up at least a bit of Vulcanite and start seeing how things go. So that's my plan for next, for Monday. Uh, tomorrow, in fact. So we'll, we'll try. I'll try and get that up and running then. Um, I, th I think I'm going to be taking out some beacons as well to try and improve the uh, imp improve the system, make it make everything flow a bit quicker. I don't seem to have any mining drills. I should probably get some normal mining drills and take those out as well, just in case I feel that I should expand out to another mine patch. I'm not sure whether that's really necessary or not, but it seems like it might be a good idea to to have some extra expansion if 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 required. And that now brings me on to uh, what else? the other things Tristan's been doing. So I've talked about his shenanigans out on Njord, where he's been setting up the Holmium uh, production. But he's also been doing a few things down on um, on Norvis from um, Mark's to-do list. So um, there was a there was a, a serious problem with a train jam over here uh, previously, where there was a train that was in the wrong place uh, for dropping off the the um, the copper ore. But that's been sorted out now. Um, there were some problems with the amount of bricks we we're producing. I think it's that we had too many bricks. Apparently he's fixed that as well. He says he's right. So that did some con change. He's tweaked the conditions on probably on this area. I think I'm 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 not quite sure exactly what he's done. But also in order to get rid of some of those, he says he's extended the amount of t brick uh, bricks that's been laid along the bus, which seems like a bit of a bit sl slightly silly given that we had sh such shortages of stone before. But I guess these are in a way technically uh, you could consider these to be a um, a storage place because if we ever decide we need them in the future, we can always come along and just rip them all up like this, and we'll have a bot frenzy, and then we'll be able those those bricks will be put back into storage and we can reuse them somewhere so I guess this is just a story we can we can think of this as a storage system or perhaps as a prettification system because you know we don't need bricks for the usual reason you lay them down because we don't need to move faster because we've got jet we've all got jetpacks and those are much much faster than running on uh, bricks anyway so there's no worries about using it for that but these could all be then flown off and put into the uh, into the supply over here and this will eventually put them onto the belt so this would be this would be an emergency um, supply of of um, stone bricks if we, if we ended up needing them. That is a lot of bots. <laughs> it's also noted that the, um, the the high priority stone drop doesn't seem to be working as required or wasn't working as required. So over here we've got um, we've got the the, uh, the warehouses up the middle and when you have the two two stops we've got the the high priority one here the low priority one over here. I talked about this quite a lot in the last series. So what we're doing what we're doing here is taking the the amount of stone in here in this case 70,000 and subtracting it from a constant set here which is 16,000 so that's a massive negative number so we're feeding in minus 54,000 here then dividing it by 8,000 and that means we need currently need minus 6 trains to satisfy this one that's a negative number so we won't have any train sent over here because that means the train limit is zero if you if you try and set it to a negative it it bottoms out at zero 
On the other side, we've got that same 70,000, but we're subtracting 128,000 from it over here. So we're subtracting it from 128,000. So that means we're feeding 57,000 into here, and that means we're now requesting um, seven trains worth of stone to fill up this this side of the station. Now there isn't that much available on the high priority um, outputs, but that does mean if the uh, where is it? If, if the, for example, the uranium processing over here, that's not uranium processing, uranium processing over here, that's kicking out some stone. And that's going into a high priority station down here, as you can see by the, uh, sort of by the name there. Um, and that's so the train that goes from here goes from stone excess to stone drop high. That's the high priority. And so if so the idea is that we will always take the stone away from here pretty much as soon as we can and use that by choice over the low priority stone. And because we seem to have quite a lot in here, that means this is just going to sit idly. Uh, gradually, We're gradually getting through it, as you can see. But basically, it's just going to sit here waiting until we've used up all the stone that's in here, and that, or nearly all the stone in here. And then when that gets down to about, I think it's, I think it's probably 8,000, then we'll start pulling in stone from the, um, from, from, from the actual stone mines as well, um, which is the low priority stone. So the idea is that we will end up using the stuff that's coming out of core mining as a sort of a, a, a high priority. We'll use the stone that's coming from the, um, uh, from the places that need to get rid of stone also as a high priority slightly lower high priority but a fairly high priority nonetheless and then if if we start to run low on all of that because we still don't have enough then we'll start to pull it in from the stone mines which is our lowest priority because it's limited isn't quite the right word so I mean, I've, I've talked about this before how this is a steady amount comes in per minute and so you want to carry on using all of that up as much as you can then we want to get rid of the high priority stuff because that that could cause other other systems to jam up and then after that we will you will top it up with anything that comes from these stone mines because when we use these up we then have to go out and, and place more of them so it's easier if we use these as the lowest priority and it means other things don't jam up as well so yes he's worked on that as well uh, he's also in uh, Norbit been very busy up here and he set up some railway yes here it is um, this bit round of applause for that uh, we have we have a little bit of railway going along here and we also have a little bit over here with with a ghost station on it so he's not made a huge amount of progress here yet but i think he's been doing quite a bit of thinking about it and planning and to be fair he did do a little bit of other fiddling up here so um the energy science over here i think I'd, i i uh, apparently i hadn't set, had had missed something when i was setting it up there was some scrap that wasn't being dealt with properly so um after a couple of false starts he eventually managed to dump that out onto the i think this is probably the scrap belt here um, yes, this is, and uh, to, to get rid of that, and 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 to dis dispose of it, and and and, uh, and and get yeah, get rid of it in, in a sensible way. I believe he's also set up a system for producing um, a space train uh, rail up here, and I don't know where he's done that. Not there, but somewhere up here, there is a system that is producing space railway, and that's how he's been able to build these little bit, little chunks of it. Um, or maybe he's just been pulling it out of this warehouse, actually. Because we did have a certain amount of it available from the uh, various space stations we've been dismantling and, and dis discovering in those. But also, I note, ah, here we go. This this will be where it comes from. So down here, we have a um, a red... Th this chest is filling up, filling up with space rail, apparently, for some reason. There's 15 of it in there. I'm not quite sure where that's come from. But anyway, we're feeding out... Normal rail is being brought up from Norvis. It's being fed out down here. This would be a good way to find it, actually. It's coming up here. Ah, yes, he was building the space railway here in amongst the energy science, because one of the things you need for space railway is energy energy catalogues. And they're being made here, obviously, um, as part... Of, uh, no, here, as part of the system for making all of all of the science around here and so he's piping them up here to where they can be made into into space railway so then they're being fed out into a red chest here um because tristan's builds builds things for, remotely but actually this is okay because rail counts as a building it's not something that's being used for a another process so actually when it goes into here the construction bots will come over grab it from here and then they can lay it down here at least when they have enough range he's going to need some more robo ports and that's why this hasn't been built up yet uh this is this sort of thing is kind of the reason why i tend to try and be in the place where i'm building things because then i'd be able to slap down a load of rail around here and even if it, even if i wanted to go outside the range of the robo ports it would be a lot easier whereas tristan is very much restricted to either using uh, either setting up loads and loads of robo ports or sending out a Spidertron out there, and we don't have a Spidertron yet. It's kind of working. It's um, it, it's in progress, should we say? Put it that way.
And, you know, I think that covers everything we've been up to. Uh, it's been not been a particularly long episode this time, but I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to blame that on us being down to three players last week and um, also and on to, to two of those players not being very well. So therefore, they weren't quite as uh, productive as they would normally be. It does make a big difference if you're, if you're struggling to concentrate because you're not feeling great. But before I go, let's have a quick look at the death counters. So despite my um, calamities, I'm still down in third place here um, with more. Um, way behind Mike and Mark and Tristan is still lurking around in 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 in, in a distant fourth uh, you can see on the other side the uh, where the deaths came from there's uh, those locomotive things are uh, are quite dangerous as i've discovered and suicide well it, it is more or less as expected <laughs> um, so i hope you've enjoyed the the uh, the video anyway and um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel check out the channel sponsor treefall.be you um, if you use the code lawrence plays you'll get 20 percent off your first month of uh, factorio or minecraft or seven days to die or various other games hostings uh, I shall be back later on in the week. So what's going on this week? Well, I won't be around on Wednesday, I'm afraid, despite what I said in yesterday's video. Sorry, I, I, um, I had, had, a, had a brain fart yesterday when I was um, rec recording and um, forgot that I won't actually be around for, the, for, for a stream on Wednesday. So that'll be, there'll be a brief hiatus, but things will continue as normal uh, next week. But come back tomorrow for the uh, Factorio uh, Space Exploration Crestorio 2 stream, so you'll be able to see us carrying on from where we've got to in, the, in this video. Tuesday there will be there's actually a video coming out for um, for non-supporters on uh, on Tuesday it's the one that came out last week for supporters because they get early access to the videos um, there's there also should be another video coming out on Tuesday for supporters if I um, assume I have time to make it which I think I should uh, this is going to be a continuation of the um, of the fl flavors of Factorio series where we're going out and having various different people making constructions in in their own styles and then sort of I'll go in and compare them see how they differ um, and that the last one of those was quite interesting it got lots of lots of interesting feedback and uh, engagement so uh, please come along watch that video on, on Tuesday and uh, let me know what you think of the way we're all building things there's GTA videos for Thursday for both supporters and non-supporters and then there'll probably be and there should be some Factorio videos at the weekend as well the normal catch-up videos as as you as per usual the, um, finally, I shall also mention that the um, my current 100 ton challenge, which is where I'm going to try and lift 100 tons throughout January, is actually going very, very well. We're, I'm basically a week in now and nice, nicely on, on schedule with the, um, with the with the amount I've done. Uh, so you'll see the other uh, videos for that going up and um, every, every every night at midnight to show to show my daily progress. And I intend to make one to come out to, a video to come out tomorrow that will uh, sort of summarise how things are going. And I'll talk about things a bit more because you know in a, in a short you've only got one minute to explain things, and that's not really long enough for the way I tend to ramble. So yeah please come along and watch that as well uh, there's always lots going on on the channel and uh, so as ever thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in all the rest of the stuff bye bye